All right, so here we are. We're recording, and uh, this is the very first attempt at Foundry um, with this this ragtag group called the Motley Few. Huh? Good pun. Anyone? Very the nice. Motley Few. Thank, Thank you. I guarantee you, yep. somewhere on the internet, someone's already got some D and D group called the Motley Few. That that seems so obvious to me. Um, I reject. I had the Motley Coup, the Motley Slew. Uh, but I, I went with the, the Motley Few. So, anyway, so here we are. We're going to play uh, play through something called The Queen Awakens. So, exciting stuff. So, let me pull you into the first real scene. Um, this is going to be, again, super, super clumsy, you guys. And... Now, if I did this properly, you all should have been pulled into a desert environment. It did work, right? I see your little mice rolling around. I'm at 98%. Oh, it'll get there. Do we want to uh, intro our characters? I just realized I'm not sure. What... No, you're going to. You're gonna. That, that was one of the things We're I texted. Oh, okay. all right, There's okay. a reason that you guys are sitting around a campfire. So tell me when you're all I loaded up. I have to restart up. Chrome. Okay. I just we'll was doing the dice thing, and it, it froze everything. Oh. Yikes. Okay, I'll see you in a second, then. <laughs> yeah, the, the dice uh, crashed my Chrome a couple times. Oh, crap. Well, I can um, disable it if it becomes a problem. It hasn't crashed mine yet. Okay, i got to pull up my journal. I, it was a setting where you could turn the resolution down, which seemed to make it freak out less on mine. Oh, man. So, yeah, we're going to be playing uh, an adventure called The Demon Queen Awakens. Um, and Curtis, you're still on the call, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Just making sure. Then I can start um, giving you some of the narrative. Now, if you click your character, you should hear all of the ambience and yada 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 so that I just want to do a sound check make sure that you guys hear that hear like a campfire crackling whatever um, I do hear campfire awesome you should see some crows flying around and you probably notice that this dude Abassi is sitting across from you and, and sort of has this crazy light arc swirling around him because he's he's a little different than the rest of you guys but um, sort of some backstory so you know uh, Abassi, you know, Abassi, you know, you, get, you guys, um, well, let me wait for Curtis to get his, his thing a going before we jump in. I don't want him to miss any of the fun. All right, I should be good. Am I in there? Uh, it says you are. No, you don't have a ping yet. Okay. Either does, either does average jackal. I don't see a ping from him either. Did you, did you lose your mark, Mr. Jackal? I'm, I'm here. No. Okay. Well, then your your um, pings. Oh no! You're there. Yeah, you are there. I'm, I'm back. Awesome. Uh, but I I do not see myself on the board here. Um. What's your character's name? Horback. Um. Hold on. Dude, maybe I forgot to bring him in. I thought he was. How's that? There we go. Okay, so everyone else has their actual character? I think so. I'm just not sure which one I am on the screen. I don't get I don't get a name when I hover. Ah, okay, that's a setting. Let's make sure I, I configured that. Do, 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 do. This is all the stuff that is going to make this tonight clumsy. Yeah, all it's right. gonna make it fun though. I mean, this will be interesting. Yeah. Hover by anyone? I, I think your character will, your own character is highlighted with a, a color, I think. I was like, wondering about that. Yeah, because I see a character that has a, like a, the square I'm on is highlighted, and it's the only character that's like that, so I'm assuming that's me. Okay, oh, okay. so. Actually, I, yeah, you're probably right. That's probably me as well. 
I just did, um, hold on, it'll give me two seconds and I'll get you there. Um, uh, identity. Display name. It's, it's from, for some reason it changed back. Oh, because I had to start over. This was all set up, you guys. Um, hover by anyone and resources hover by anyone. Update token. Okay, so now Camus the Bane should be there. Um, ah, right there here. we go. And appearance, Atreus, hover by anyone, and resources. Uh, hover by anyone. Update token. All right, so now Atreus should be there. This guy here. This is Mar. What there is appearance. Orbic. Hover by anyone and resources. Hover by anyone. Update token. All right, so Horbeck's name should appear, and Dob Bull. I don't know. I, I'm gonna. I, if I inadvertently call you Karen, let me know, because uh, that's his character in the other game. Um, hover by anyone. Resources. Hover by anyone. Update token. Is that everybody? You all should be able to see your characters now, right? And when you hover over yep. yourself. Awesome. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. And so you guys, some some things to know. You probably already know this unless you haven't messed it all around. Right click, drag, moves the mount or moves the map around. Your scroll wheel zooms in and out. Left, you can do your selector stuff. All right. And this game, uh, Foundry is all about focus. So, you know, focusing, you do everything with your tokens. Right, tokens in the chat window. If that makes any sense. All right. Any any big questions before we before we roll? Yeah, should hotel rooms have ants in them? Because I'm seeing a lot here. Um. I'm well, I mean, not. are there any uncles? Because you know that could be a thing. No. I was just curious on uh, passive, like checks yeah are we doing where even if you have a high passive like perception or pi passive wisdom you automatic you still have to roll or do you are we um, playing where if it's high enough you just automatically get information there's some things that are high enough other things um like i would think about if if there's intent if you specifically are doing a thing then you have to roll if it's something you could know just by being around and you ask about it you know what i mean like we're going to play a little bit by ear. If you hear a bunch of noise, there's a Corvette pulling in behind me. Ah, that sweet, sweet smell of Chevy exhaust. Um, but yeah, um, so let's play it by ear. This, this is really sort of like a can this even work experience right now and go from there. Um, has anyone not had a chance to play with the tool at all? I think most of you Very guys did, right? Bit. Yeah, just just the tiniest bit. I think when I tried to do it before, I wasn't. Ever, I, I don't think I ever figured out how to move around or anything. Okay, well that'll be pretty easy. So a couple of things that are different. Um, um, there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts. So if you if you click on your character, um, you can hold Shift down and rotate your character with your mouse wheel. Right, it'll rotate in, you know, certain whatevers. And it makes a lot more sense than in Fantasy Grounds when you do the same thing and it just makes your character giant. Um, another quick one is um, you can actually, I'll move a basket around. You can actually move with your arrow keys. Which is surprisingly awesome. Right? Um, now, I've not tried to do a multi-segment um, multi move like we do in Fantasy, like where you can go like 10 feet this way, then 20 feet this way, and it does that calc for you. I've not tried that yet. But I think this is this is sort of like more like video game meets board game, kind of. Um, but some tricks are if you hold your shift down, it won't move. It'll it'll rotate if with you if with your arrow keys. And if you hit up and left at the same time, it rotates it at an angle. Huh? I thought that was pretty good. It was a, I thought it was a, a, a nice delightful thing because oddly in Fantasy Grounds, rotating is one of the most frustrating things in the game. Oh my god, it's so fussy. Yeah. Yeah. Greed. All right, so here we are. Um, so there's that's a basic. Um, if you look at your the top uh, the top bar, you'll see the icons are running across your top, right? 
your chat windows where a lot of stuff happens. You'll see rolls and all of that there. Um, if you see the two swords, that's your encounter window. In Fantasy Grounds, we're used to having this giant encounter window, right, that you do everything from. Um, that's it's, it's much smaller here, right? Um, I have an extension that allows you to see both the chat and the combat window, or the encounter window at the same time. So the combat tracker, right? Um, otherwise, you'd be flipping between those two back and forth all the time. So this extension adds that. Just like that dice tray is an extension that we've added as well. Unlike Fantasy Grounds, I have contributed to none of these, so you will not hurt my feelings if you're like, I hate this one. It's like, enough. Um, down the left-hand side are your tools, right? The main one is probably the little dude with token control. I don't know what the non-GM version looks like, but I have a whole bunch of tools down the side. Um, you can, the one that's pretty handy is there is measure distance, so... Um, you know, I, I'm measuring. Can you guys see that when I do the measuring distance? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. See, so that that that's kind of handy. Um, you also have your select targets, so you got that going for you. I think if you hold shift down, it does multi select. See, so you're all selected. Does it see? You, does it show you as selected when I select you? Well, the blue circle on the top of my square, or sort of an, an aqua circle. Okay, so there you go. Um, but most of the time, you're going to want that little that little box selected. All right. Now, another thing that I added for you guys was um, if you select your character, do you guys have um, a little a little uh, toolbar that pops up on screen that says things like inventory, features, skills, saves? It's like a quick action bar. Quick action bar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's an extension too. It's really handy because that gives you really quick action access to all your stuff. Right. Cool. Wait, where is that, Tom? Um, I think it's it'll, it'll be in the upper left. If you so select your character, mm -hmm. and you'll see like Horbeck, and then yep. um, you'll, you'll see like inventory, oh, yeah. feature, okay. skills. Yes. yes, yes, yes. And you can move that wherever you want it. Cool. Now I don't know if you have this one, but in the uh, at the bottom of your screen, you have macros. Well, you should have macros. That's up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to configure those. You can create macros and download macros and do whatever you want. Um, you also have, do you have uh, another little toolbox that has like your entire party and it shows sort of their, um, shows information about them, like a little toolbar? Or is that just on my screen? I'm not sure if you have access to this one or not. I have a thing on the left that the has the players and how long we've been okay. playing on here. Yeah, this must be a DM tool. Um, the one, the one that I have, if you watch the video later, you'll see it. Um, what I'm talking about. So other than that, um, you guys want to start? You guys ready to grow? We any other questions just, before we jump in? I got a, I got a dumb uh, UI thing. I just lost that nifty shortcut bar. I tried to click and drag it, and then it disappeared. Oh, click your character again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I imagine it. Does it appear if you click anyone else? No. Okay, yeah. See, I get it for all of you, um, yeah, okay. but you guys probably just get it per person. Okay, so for some reason, I just cleared my, yeah, myself. So, got it. Yeah, so if you click away, that's the other thing is if you targeted someone, see if it works. Um, oh, we're not in combat, so that's why it's not working. Um, I have it so if you if you do a left click on the canvas anywhere, it, un, it untargets everything. Right, um, so that you don't have to keep thinking about it. And then I think, as some people have have discovered, if you hold your mouse button down, it gives you the yes. look here pings. Right, like I'll, I'm going in here, right, which is kind of handy. Mm. All right, I feel like I feel like that's <clears throat> that's a lot. And I think that's about it. I think that's about it for the. Uh, for the intro. So you guys are all sitting around this camp, right? And you may wonder how you've how you've arrived here. Um, well, so for, the, for the past several months, there were a bunch of rumors um, about this strange figure that was wandering lands, making outlandish requests for royals, uh, requests of royals and rulers. Um, you, you know, you encountered this this person uh, firsthand. You saw written posters promising riches in exchange for to quote 
the bravery needed to save the world. Right? So I wouldn't sign you guys up for a lame adventure. Ooh, EOS webcam utility. Um, but anyway, um, all of these, you know, all of these rumors, all of these things pointed back to a single person named Abasi, who you see sitting across from you at the fire. Um, some described him as a doomsaying crackpot with madness in his eyes or a deranged old man yearning for the lost days. Um, but, you know, over time, um, you found a path forward with, with Mr. Abasi and um, opted into his quest. Well, why? Many riches. He's, he's promised each of you, I believe, roughly 7,000 gold each to complete this adventure. So, you know, you're going to you're going to make some coin, you know, some coin on this. Um, so he, you know, he is a man in his 60s, um, but his build is that of a much younger man. He's tall. He's broad shoulder. He's muscular. His garb is very simple um, and light with no more than what's necessary to, to protect him. Um, the once bald and clean shaven, you know, a few days uh, growth of gray hair sort of betrays his age. So he's a little older than it seems. Um, I like how Curtis has put uh, what looks like a hat on his head, by the way he's left his cursor there. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's the same for anyone else. Anyway, um, you see a network of scars that cut through his, you know, his darkly tanned skin, and it's, and it's weather-worn um, all the way down his cheek um, to his neck and his shoulders. It, it seems he's seen no shortage of battle. Um, but unlike most who sort of break under the stress of constant danger, he doesn't appear diminished you know, by these trials. Um, his eyes are the color of the morning dawn. And his gaze is stern. And just once in my life, you guys, I would love for someone to describe me that way. Um, that's a, that's a quite, a, quite a descriptor. Um, so, you know, he looks across this fire at you guys and says, thank you, thank you for agreeing to listen to my offer. Hey, I should do voices. Let's see if it works. Uh, thank, thank you for agreeing to listen to my offer. Please allow me to explain the history of our foes. So you may properly understand what is at stake. And of course, if if you don't want to hear his, you know, hear his history, you can we can wave him off. He sort of looks around the fire, into each of your eyes, looking for sort of any indication that you want to hear his tale. Yeah, let's let's. Everyone has a story to tell, and. Yours is as good as any, I'm sure. Can, Can you get hear more? The abbreviated version. Uh, you, you want me to fast fast track fast track my my culture's deep rich history, um, and, and you know, fine. Um, but I, I appreciate your enthusiasm. Uh, what, what what's your name? Atreus. Thank you, Atreus. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm, 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 I look young, but I am old. My, my brain is addled. Um, you know, we have, we've traveled for, we've traveled for more than a week together. And yet I've realized as I sit around this fire, we've never, we've never spent any time getting to know each other. So before I weave my tale, why don't we go around this campfire? Each of you introduce yourself. Give us a little bit of your backstory, a little bit of your history. You're a little bit on the spot right now. Yeah. Yeah, you are. So let's start. You guys want to go clockwise or counterclockwise? The way of the crow or the way of the raven? What the clock? Uh, roll a history check then, if you want to know what a clock is. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Um, so let's start with Da Bowl. Well, I don't like to talk about myself that much, but. Uh, I'm a, I'm a gnome, as you can see. I'm pretty old. I don't like to tell anybody how old I really am, but uh, I'm I'm uh, deceptive in my age. So even though I'm old, I'll do shit where you're like, I thought that guy was old, but it doesn't seem like he's old. But I'm actually old. Pretty cranky. I like to mumble. I'm a thief for hire. I don't like to talk about it. I just do the work. Not super ambitious. Just like to do a job. Uh, also hold a grudge. I've got a lot of grudges. So 
That's Dom, helpful. you, Dom, you, you and I are going to get along swimmingly. I, I too, I too, uh, am, am misleading with my age. Uh, people assume me a young man or an old man on any given day. I, I appreciate that. And if you're, if you're looking for a grudge match, you have, you have found, you have found the right group. The wind continues to, the, the desert wind continues to blow as sort of Dob sort of falls silent, uh, sort of looks to his right at Horbeck and says, uh, sort of nudges you like, you're up. As you can see, I'm a, uh, a, a military man who has seen many a campaign, led my men through many a, many a dangerous mission uh, we were wiped out by a, a band of elves. Um, so you will excuse me if I, uh, seem to maybe, uh, not trust <laughs> elves all that much. <laughs> fair, fair enough. You know, trust is trust is, is is often earned, and and I believe by the end of this adventure, um, you may find you may find the good and the good at all, or not. I will tell. And everybody sort of looks to a Atreus, and is like. You know we're we're going around we're going around counterclockwise here, Atreus. And uh, as you all heard, my name is Atreus. Uh, I come from the Feywild. I have, uh, in comparison, my age is young for my people, but similarly, I am old in comparison to those from this realm. Uh, I've had many adventures. I have. I am skillful in many things, and uh, I, I am a. I'm usually for hire. I, I I'm someone. I'm somewhat of a. I guess what a lot of people around here call a mercenary, or, or a man for hire. My my skills tend to uh, align with those who have monetary needs or needs that meet my monetary needs. Um, I. I haven't made a lot of friends in my adventures because the things I do do not necessarily align with me necessarily. Having a lot of friends, but those that I do have, I keep close to myself. Understandable. That's un understandable. Well, hopefully, hopefully, by the end of this journey together, you will look upon me as a friend. And let's be honest, I hope you look upon me at all because this is going to be be tough. You, sir, in the red. Yeah, I'm, my name's Cadmus. Cadmus Delbane. And as you can tell, I'm an elf. And, uh, Horbeck, I want you to know that I know you don't disregard elves very kindly, but I have been a soldier, but only for a short while. I could not follow my leader's orders. I felt like I was following them blindly. I had to get away from that war. It was terrible. I'm uh, I'm young for my age, but I've seen most, or I've seen a lot more than most people twice my age. So, let's just say I uh, like to try and find the good in people, but uh, don't cross me. Seems fair. Seems fair. And do you have do you have a nickname? Cadmius del Bane, Cadmius of the Bane. Cad, you could just call me Cad. Fantastic. I was I was afraid you'd want to go by Bane. No. Curious, curious, I Cad. Bane. I uh, I have some launches launches in my in my bag. If if your throat is scratchy, I can I can get them for you. But uh, you you have the voice of someone who's who's seen some stuff. Were you That's born in? Was I born what? Sorry, I, I didn't hear what you said. Have you, were you happened to be born in the dark? Of the dark? 
I might be thinking of another fellow I met named Bane, but I'd rather not talk about that. We'll save that for another campfire tale. So, I believe you're, well, that's your name. So, I believe you're up. So, tell us your tale. Yeah. Oh my god, it's actually Sue. Um, so nice to meet you guys. I'm, my name is Sue. I, this is, you know, I feel like I'm really bringing, like, a new, another, like, spice to this group because I'm very different than you all. This is my first adventure. I'm also very young. People tell me I look young and they're right. Um, you know, I was right, you know, I was an orphan. I was raised by the Temple of Lyra. I'm actually a joy bringer. Um, it's a beautiful communal space. We have a lot of like banquets and dances, really just believe in spreading joy all through the land. Um, and this is actually my first time leaving the temple, which is very exciting for me. I'm really excited to go out and share my music with all of the world. Um, oh yeah, I'm a bard. Uh, I know everyone's been talking about like their race. Um, I, you know, I don't really see race. We didn't really have that in the temple. Um, like people tell me I'm a half elf and I like believe them. But you know, when I look in the mirror, I just see, I just feel like a deep, sense of belonging with all living things like when i look into the mirror i simply see the reflection of all of the world's children smiling back at me um anyway super excited to go on this adventure get some stories um we have some tales most of all i'm so excited to for us all to become really close friends that is you know it's it's, it's always good it, it warms it warms my old bones to have such enthusiasm and, and new blood you know uh, from what you've described, you may be very interested in this event. Uh, it happens just outside the city in which we met. It's called uh, Burning Orc. Uh, you'll see a bunch of, well, we call them the undesirables, but uh, they make their way in, 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 in caravan out into this, you know, this deserty area, and, like, I don't, I don't want to get into what happens there, but uh, I've heard that you either love it uh, or you hate it. Uh, something you might want to consider, you know. I've heard I've heard great things. I heard that the uh, there I have a friend who's a herbologist who really uh, makes makes quite a killing there. I'm pretty sure that everyone there is some sort of herbologist. <laughs> We're all, always dabbling in the herbs. Well, it's nice to meet you, Sue. I apologize for mis mispronouncing your name. For for weeks we've traveled and and you've yet to correct me. So I, I I'm mortified that I've called you so so many times. So, so Sue, um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So, as, as I mentioned, you know, my name is Abasi, right? Um, and I, I come from a long, a long line of, 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 of men and women who were chosen to protect these lands. Uh, my father was a protector. My mother was a protector. My grandparents were a protector. I was raised with adopted siblings and with uncles within the order, um, I can honestly count on one hand the friends that I have had in my life who are not part of the great families dedicated to keeping the forces of evil at bay and balancing the scales so that all creation would not fall into destruction. I don't spend a lot of time at a lot of time at the things like uh, the burning work. I, I've got you know my soul is heavy, um, so you know my family was one that was chosen by the gods to stand watch over the people, uh, you know the you know. Evil ran, you know, runs free in the darkness, uh, with with no gods to watch them. Uh, you know, I, I, I've I've learned that you know, their eyes were golden to reflect the light of the sun god, so all that looked upon them would be safe, and that so so no wickedness would would stand in their gaze. And and as you may have noticed, my eyes glow gold. I am sadly the last of the line. Hence me going forth and looking for heroes that would accompany me for this one last great adventure. And if you have any questions about Abasi or whatever else, you know, feel free to ask him. Otherwise, he's going to dive into his history. You can sort of see he's ready to sort of tell the tell, tell, tell the tale. Does anyone want to know anything? Going once. So he's quiet for just a moment and uh, then sort of 
dives into what exactly is happening, you know, with, uh, you know, with your adventure here. Um, of course, I just inadvertently closed it, so you'll have to bear with me while I take myself out of character and look for the damn notes. There we go. So, you know, grab your grab your, your warm drinks and your snacks and wrap your, your sleeping bags around you and settle in for a tale. Over a thousand years ago, the demon queen, Neblek, because nothing can ever be easy to pronounce, ruled an empire that spanned a continent and subjugated nations. At her side were four dreadful generals, each of whom led her vast armies of corrupted mortals marching towards their bloody cause of domination. For centuries, the demon queen ruled unopposed. She was cruel, depraved, and brought nothing but devastation to the lands that she claimed. The people within her borders knew only suffering, except those who served her and were rewarded. None dared oppose the immortal tyrant openly, none except for my order. We are, or rather we were, the Eyes of Aten, a secret society dedicated to combating the demon queen herself. Now, the Eyes of Aten rallied the land's mightiest warriors to cast down upon the great generals and break their armies. It took them centuries of battle and stained the lands with red blood in the process. But the Order's greatest magi and sages were able to defeat the Demon Queen. This victory was not all it appeared, though, for while she was defeated, she was not destroyed. The Demon Queen was immortal being, was an immortal being with, uh, yeah, uh, with magic that defied all others. My predecessors knew that there could be no total victory, not against an evil so horrible. So desperate for a solution that would return the lands to uh, the control of the mortals and break the Empire's blood uh, stranglehold, they imprisoned her and her generals using a powerful magic and shackled them deep within a sacred vault built upon an uncharted desert. Now, unfortunately, this cost the Order much, and the eyes of Aten were never fully to be able to rebuild after sealing the Demon Queen away. The toll had been too great. Our greatest heroes and leaders were integral in making the magic work and were sealed away with her. Without the powerful leadership that directed them, our ranks have all but disappeared. Again, I am the last. Though well, though well before my time, historical records in our archives show that the order became fractured, scattered across the lands in a dim shadow of its former greatness. By the time I and my peers inherited our predecessors. They, we've forgotten much of our history. We've misplaced and squandered our resources and lost all of the fame and support that we once had. We had become a relic of the time, and society had forgotten, and many of my peers could not muster the courage to carry on and simply left the order. Those of us that remained carried on as best we could, knowing very soon the old magic holding her at bay would fail, and someone, or some of us, would need to renew it. Now, as you know, some people love history, others could give a shit. You want to know more, I'm happy to share it. Otherwise, we can get down to brass tacks. So, by renew this magic, you mean others may have to sacrifice themselves and be trapped in the vault with the queen? Like, you're... High priest did. So every thousand years, something like that. It's it's unclear. Our records are, like I said, lost. Um, we need to go through and and, and and someone needs to go and renew the magic. Um, renew the bind, you know, the bonds that keep that keep this queen from dominating the world and escaping. That keep her generals locked away where they should be. Are I, you able to do the renewal? I am. It is what I was born for. And if I had to, I, I, I would have gone it alone. Um, but I'm not sure I would have survived. And you know, once the seal is broken so that I can renew, the risk was that I would put the, the, entire, the entirety of, of the world at risk. Thank you. 
So you need us to help. Yeah. That's what that's, it, that's, what's it, that's it. What's it pay? What's you want to jump right? Jump right. You want to <laughs> jump right to the money, huh? <laughs> yeah. And this is where I have to figure out where my notes are in this thing because I, I looked at it a second ago. I want to make sure it's the accurate number. I think it was seven thousand gold apiece. Da, 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 da. And well, where's the rest of the border? So. As I said, this might be a bit of a train wreck tonight because I'm learning a new tool. I know where I would look for this in my old tool. Almost there. Sorry, my, my old brain is adult. Um, 7,000 gold for each of you, plus whatever treasures you come upon that don't disrupt the corpses or disgrace those great heroes, priests, and warriors that gave their lives to imprison the queen. So is, is 7,000 like a lot, like kind of grew up with more of a post-heresy like barter system thing going on so like just just some context of the local economy would be really helpful yeah so um so it, it, you know it, it seven thousand to each person it, you know no, it, it, you all no, it, it, character. oh no i'm so i'm in dm mode right okay, so okay. um yeah um purposely um so yeah so like you see when you ask him that question like he looks a little confused right because seven thousand gold is a lot of money, you know, to do this old man. I mean, if you, if you do the math, there's what, six of you, five of you. I don't, I can't remember how many, one, two, three, yeah, five of you. That's a, that's a, that's a good amount of plus the riches of a tomb, right? The riches of a tomb. Like that's, that's a lot of gold and that's a lot of potential treasure. Um, but he's also slightly confused because, you know, he's not a floor higher person and you can sort of see all of this in his face. Um, so, if you do not find that amount agreeable, what, what do you think would be a fair amount of money for the situation? You know, I, you know, all I really want is the satisfaction of a job well done. Um, I was just trying to, I was just trying to get in context. Uh, that's that's a great, that sounds great. It's a great amount of money. I thought uh, I, I was thought... going to say, as someone who gets paid a lot for uh, doing various. We'll say jobs. That that is a good amount of money. So you, you'll do good by that. Thanks. Well, well, yeah, yeah, meets my rate. I, I appreciate that, you guys, because honestly, I, I am an old man, and you know, I, I don't understand this whole gig economy thing that has sort of emerged in 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 the lands, um, you know. Uh, but I, I definitely don't want to take advantage of you. I don't want you to, you know. To be in the middle Just of something curious. and think to yourself, like, I, this is no good for me, and walk away. I'm, I'm, I want to make sure that the money is good enough that you trust me. So um, I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping that in and of itself that 7,000 gold is a, is a good wage. But on top of that, you know, I would expect some, some riches within, which, within the tombs um, that can be yours. It's a good rate. i just curious how an old man like you can afford to pay five of us 7,000 gold each. You know, my, our order is, is fractured, but, you know, we are not without our, without our incomes. Right? There, there are those who still, you know, who historically had, had donated to the cause. Um, and, and again, you know, um, we had access, we had access to tombs and treasures for, for millennia. So, you know, our, you know, fear not, fear not. I can, I can afford to pay. I can afford to pay. I just want to make sure that you guys are comfortable, you know, with the, with, with the reward. I mean, I've been yeah, pretty clear. That. This is not, this is not a no risk. We're not, this isn't a walk in and, and walk out sort of a thing. This is going to be hard. It's going to be 
It's going to be tough. But you seem like the lot that can do it. I have a question. You say this yes, recurs every thousand years. This is something that must be done about every thousand years or so. Yeah. Have you passed your knowledge on to others? Thus, when time comes again, this could be redone? Or do others have the same knowledge as you? I know you I said... Have- they all left away, but are there still others that have this knowledge to redo this spell? So, that is part of the burden that I am under. I, I have found none willing or worthy. Uh, people, you know, kids today just aren't interested in saving the world and going on adventures. I, 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 I'm hoping when this is all over that, uh, that I do find I find a path forward because, again, I, I will not. I will not be here in a thousand years to take up this cause again. Perhaps one of you will find so, a way. Go ahead. Absolutely. And and you said this was uh, obviously treacherous. That's that's why you hired a slot. Uh, can you elaborate more on what you mean by treacherous? Are there others trying to stop you from doing this? I, I would assume not. I, I would assume the magics are still in place, right? Um, I, I'm, you know, I, I can't guarantee it, um, uh, but my expectation, my expectation is that, um, you know, once we find the queen and I perform the ritual, um, she will be locked back down. Um, I don't know what's going to be on the other side of the door. To be perfectly frank, right? The 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 literature, as our you know as our um, as our order sort of fractured and and, and 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 faded away, the quality of our of, of our intel did the same. You know, we don't there there is no there is no I library where I can go and look things up. Uh, we have oral. We've had the oral history from my family. We have books and notes that have been passed down. I know what I need to know to perform my role, but a lot of the other context is actually lost on me. So we don't really know what we're up against. I'd be lying if I said we did. And if any of you walk away, I can't say as I blame you. I mean, I'm asking you to follow an old man into the unknown. But I do have some seriously awesome tats. He raises his hand. Well, I'm in. I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Sounds good to me, old man. Sounds good to me. Anyone who, who who's not interested, look, look, there are supplies, you know, if we're not back within 24 hours, you know, take the horses, head back to the city. There's enough supplies in these tents to get you back. So you can see else planned. Yeah, so you guys can see that he's, you know... He's not desperate, um, and um, but he's not he's not one hundred percent confident, right? So, you know, as the fire starts to burn down, you know, and the conversation wane, wanes a bit, you know, um, Abbasi says. Well, we have a big day in the morrow. Perhaps we retire to our, our tents and get some sleep, and I'll, I'll rouse you awake at, at, at sunup, and we'll make our way just over to the east. So, you know, um, oh, and by the way, I just realized it's 8,000 go- of gold per person. 8,000. Not 7,000, 8,000. I just found it. That should have been bolded. Um, 
so it, unless there's any other questions about any of this, you know, I, I think it's going to be bedtime and you guys will head to the vault first thing in the morning. By the way, Sue, if you're interested, the pay for this should be enough to buy a herd of 8,000 goats. At, at a thousand, at, a, at, at one gold a piece, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Imagine Dang. showing up to Burning Orc with 8,000 goats. That yeah. would be so cool. They could stand on each other's backs and That's make right. one big goat. Incredible. The fractal in goat. All right. Now, so... would that be screaming goats? Oh, God. So you guys, you know, you guys settle in for the night. Um, and, uh, um, you know, Abbasi seems anxious and, and uneasy, but um, but motivated to sort of do what he needs to do. And let's see if I've figured out this, how to work this yet. So I should be pulling all of you into this next scene. My uh, tiny gnome bladder needs a bio break. I'll be right back. Sounds good. I got to figure out how to get the next scene up anyway. But you guys should see an image start to load. I don't even know any uh, good, good campfire song. <laughs> On a little bit of background music for Arrival. None that from this realm would, would understand. It's in my language. It's more like high pitch screams and yells. I can get into that. Uh, you know, all, all music is music. That's true. So, but I, so I also have, you know, I'm just going to pitch you this. I know that you were talking about how kids these days, a lot of institutional knowledge being left, being left, the kids these days aren't interested. Have you considered carving the floor onto the back of a clock? Um, they're usually made out of like hard materials so they can survive a thousand years. And I've personally heard that kids are really into the TikToking sound that it makes. <laughs> He just smiles, slightly confused at what the hell you're talking about. Uh, oh, by the way, Melan, <laughs> you're... That was a long walk for a short... Yeah, it was That's a good a joke, walk. though. Tick rock. Um, uh, the, uh, you guys all missed an awesome joke. Um, your audio is a little garbled. Is anyone else hearing garbled audio, or is it just me? Just so you know. Not just you. Okay. Yeah, same. And c congratulations, oh. Mr. Mude, on awesome. getting your, your, your video camera going. I, you know, I got to pump the brakes on these martinis or else I'm not going to be able to read these stuff. The good news is we're almost done with narrative, you guys. Um, there's a lot of background. This is a pretty interesting adventure. We'll, we'll sort of talk out of character. David, super props for having a, doing actual role play. That was awesome. I, um, uh, you, you, my heart swelled when you started to speak. I, Wait, I you don't sound like that normally? I want, but your character still has to say a boot. <laughs> I'm curious how long you're going to be able to keep that up, David. I was worried. Like, I wasn't joking about the launches, man. Like, um, those voices are, are tough. So what you guys don't know is, even when I use the voice modulator, I'm still doing voices, but I don't feel as stupid because I know it's being modulated. So I have no idea what that guy sounded like to you guys. Hopefully, um, throaty enough so you guys are all like let's do a tool check <laughs> nice so a tool check you guys are hearing music right you're seeing the you're seeing the screens I don't uh, I don't have the new map yet interesting it says yeah, you do it's all black. all black yeah unless the new map is black No, it's, it's, uh, you should be seeing a pretty glorious thing. 
Maybe it's still loading? No, I, I even clicked on... I don't even see a load bar, to be honest. Okay, let me let me pull you out of it and, and pull you guys back. Did anyone have it? Nope. Okay, now we're loading. Now oh, you're seeing now, the title now you're seeing the you're seeing the Queen's Awakens, right? Okay, now we're going to yep. the new one, and I'm gonna pull you back to the new one and see if it loads. It may take a second. Does uh, it say any, anything? It said, "I do not own any tokens with vision on this screen." Yeah, uh, that's, I got the same. You have lost the connection to the server. Exactly. Okay, that's an interesting thing. Um, so I wonder. Okay, so I think I have to do something really weird. I think I have to drag you guys onto this screen, which is stupid. So there's gonna be a bunch of giant people just tops down view just so you can see the screen. <laughs> so you guys are coming down that trail. <laughs> Huh? Now do you see the screen? I must be into parkour. I didn't know that about my own character. Yeah, I'm, you guys I'm like climbing up the wall. You guys like like literally are like you just like are are sort of parkour running down the you know down the hill. Um, but you you all see it now, correct? Yep. That's a really. I wonder if there's a setting somewhere in here that allows you to see it without having a token on it. That seems like a weird oversight. Um, all right, let me. Uh... So the the screen the screen I'm seeing is like a a, a big entrance way with uh, two yes. large statues guarding a door. And you may be asking yourself why. Well, let me tell you why. Wait, this music seems a little too much for me. No, that's not. That's pretty good. Okay, let me uh let me turn the volume down a bit. So I can talk over it. That should have turned the volume down for everybody, right? We're learning the tool, guys. I part of this train wreck. Okay, it's like part of this is learning the tool. All right. So look, you guys. Um, you know, after weeks, after weeks as a group, you know, of, of difficult travel across shifting dunes and great seas of burning sands, you sort of. You, you camp for the night, and in the morning you crest a hill to see a long, narrow canyon of redstone flooded by sand. Nestled in the heart is a great stone obelisk casting a long, ominous shadow in the late hours of the day. During the travel, um, Abasi spoke of the vault's you know, known history, or at least what little he knew of it. Whoa. That was cool. It just panned over to whoever just said that. Um, uh, ah. It distracted me. Uh, <laughs> Let me watch. Where was I? Um, he claimed that when it, was, when it was first built, this vault was covered in white marble and its obelisk was capped with a, the purest of gold, all gleaming in the sun. And as you gaze upon it, um, you only see the bare stone scarred by centuries of abuse from the wind and the sand. It's impossible to know whether the tomb was robbed of its splendor by mortal hands or the work of the elements. Regardless, looking upon it gives you a certain feeling of dread. And if the vault is real, then perhaps the evil within it is, is as well. So, you know, in the morning, um, over breakfast, Abasi explains that the tomb could only be opened at the day's first light with the gem and the right command words. By his reckoning, the timing for this thing is going to be pretty close. And, you know, maybe there's only a few days before the thousand years is up and the demon queen is free. So night passed without any issues. And despite sort of the nerves and paranoia present among you guys, uh, the hard sand made for a terrible bed. Camping gear or not, in the early morning hours before the sun chased away the evening chill, obviously quietly woke each of you up. Wake, friends. We have little time before dawn. And there is much to do. Before striking camp, you're afforded an hour or two to eat and prepare for the events to come. For his part, Abassi prays to the sun for guidance and protection. Watching this aging holy warrior, one might believe he's truly unfazed by the pre-dawn hours and the weight of what is coming. So before you break camp, 
Square away your inventories. Make any preparations that you need to make before entering the vault of a 10. This is the point of no return, you guys. Once inside this vault, you will not be able to leave until your quest is complete or you're dead. So I should go pee again now. Then it sounds like sounds like um, yeah, you may need to go to the uh, to the vault of uh, of Cliff. <laughs> so. Any final parting questions? You have your bit of narrative. Abasi, how much combat have you seen? Too much to recall. Too much to tell. So you are you are, are battle hardened. As it evidenced by the scars on my face. I do not choose the way of violence. But sometimes it is the path. And lastly, I also have a question. Yes, sir. Given the dangers we may or may not face, is it too much to ask for half of my uh, payment now? Well, young man. Yeah, have you I ever? I'm older than you, actually. But I do not. I do not. I do not see age or race or gender or really anything. I don't. I don't see. Uh, um, as you, you say ever, that, I shift my face through like an elf, a dwarf, and different races. Just neither do I. Being a changeling, I'm anything. And he's and his yeah. He he marvels. He marvels at your ability to do so, and then wonders if you need a long rest to regain your abilities. So. My question to you is, have you ever held 8,000 gold? Have you ever carried 8,000 gold pieces? Can't say that I have. Not all at once, at least. Then it may not surprise you that I, too, could not carry 8,000 times the five of you on my person. Our gold, your gold, I assure you, is waiting back from where we departed. Would you mind uh, writing me a letter that whether I return or not, I can get the money? Because I can send that off by Raven to a, a colleague of mine to claim the reward, less my return. I, I, I am happy to do so. In my tent is parchment, ink, and a seal. And as you may have me. noted, there are plenty of ravens, uh, but I cannot guarantee the flight from point A to point B. That, that my friend, is on you. That is perfectly fine. So yeah, so he, he, he pops into his tent, gives you the letter, makes arrangements, and all is good. And, you know, look, looks at the rest of the party. And it's, if... If there's nothing else, we must, we must be off. And you guys head from camp, and you head through this sort of narrow valley of stone. Um, and, you know... Railing on your brain is like, it seems like this should have been flooded with sand centuries ago, right? But you come upon this white stone edifice. Um, its facades framed on all sides by cliffs and redstone in which it's carved. Great monolithic statues of muscled guards stand on either side of the entryway, keeping a timeless vigil unbroken by the obvious battering they've received from the centuries of wind and of sand. Um, a broad stone door embellished with a golden depiction of sun bars um, bars your way forward. Above it, a great golden disc glimmers in the morning light. Standing before the massive entryway, Abasi wastes no time. The last remaining member of the Ayaz Atan begins speaking in religious and arcane words of authority and divine right. And the symbol upon the door begins to gleam brightly, as if the sun itself sh is shown upon it, as if acted upon by some tremendous force. The doors begin to part, revealing the passage beyond. All right. And with that note, I need to take a quick break because someone's been pulling on my shirt while I read that. So give me one second. Question for you guys. I'm, I'm not seeing any of my weapons or anything in inventory. Is there somewhere else that should be showing up or do you guys have weapons in your inventory? Yeah, I think it would be whatever you had in your uh, 
Uh, if you set up your character on D&D &D Beyond and then imported it from there, it would be whatever you had in the yeah, inventory yeah, there should be here. So. Oh, that would have been a good showing up. That would have been a good check that we all had. You're in. Like, did anyone mess with their characters since yesterday? Because I imported them yesterday. And if I look at your character, no, I, I haven't. So Maybe. your wep your weapons. Because did you equip them? No. The only thing I've got showing is unarmed strike, other than my spells. All right, let me look at. This is why we're doing this test run, you guys. That's why the we're getting ready to. You're make, actually getting ready to do D and D stuff in about ten seconds as soon as we get his. Make thing. sure when you're under. Yeah, I don't. I don't. That, that you don't have a sub filter selected, because so they have like action, bonus action, reaction, and equip. If you have one like the wrong thing, like it would be highlighted black, and if it's. Selected, it could make it seem like there's nothing there. He doesn't have anything. Or if you have multiple selected. Yeah, I don't. Does anyone else? Is anyone else missing weapons? I got mine. Hold on. Let me look at my campaigns. Mm. And I'm going over to this one, to campaign. And I'm looking at your character is Cadiz the Bane. And I'm looking at your inventory. Dude, you have none. You have no inventory. That is weird. Did you create a new character? No, so that... no, 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 that's the same. That's the same one. Yeah, so it says I'm looking at equipment one. and it says Starting, I can either click add items or starting. So let me click starting equipment, equipment or gold. So why don't you go to D and D Beyond? All right, and I'm equip just your going character. There right now, yeah. Equip your character, and then while we're playing, before you go, I'll re-import your character. It shouldn't take but a second. Um, okay. So do you know, like load him up in D and D Beyond if you want, and then. Um, did anyone else have an issue? Everyone else has their weapons, right? I wouldn't recommend going, going <laughs> proceeding without any any weapons. Just saying. Hard mode. I mean, no, that, that's why I just wanted to check really quickly. I wasn't sure yeah. if I was looking in the right place or not. The way I see this, just, you know, you guys, David's just going to trail behind. And, um, you know, just make sure he doesn't get hurt. All right. <laughs> let me close you down and let me open up. So, um... Where were we? All right. So here comes the real stuff, you guys. This is exciting moment. Exciting moment. Uh oh, is it crashing? No. All right. Activate. I should have pulled you all into the crypt. Did it? Woohoo! <laughs> all right so when the players first entered this room begin playing this ambient track all right well let me go play the ambient track you guys i won't read this stuff out loud at some point <laughs> that would that would be that would be rich so what am i supposed to read the vault of a ton there is no wait vault ambience there it is let me hit stop. Ah, here we go. Playlist. You're now in the vault of the time. So hopefully you're hearing some stuff. Is it working? Again, I know this is like pulling us out of the immersion, but like um, session, session one. Yeah, I don't hear anything yet. It's probably really subtle. It, it's really, really soft. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you're in a tomb, so it's like just the, sort of the hum. You know. I hear it. But do you all see the map? Yep. And better question, because I have not yes. played this. 
tool before. Do you see all of the map or just the map, the the, the room that you're in? Just the room. Just the room. Just the room. All right. Hey, cool, cool, cool. hey, Tom. Yeah. So I I thought everything was okay because I had my my character sheet out and uh -huh. everything looked good, but that's mm -hmm. not actually inside of uh forge here so when i go to my inventory i've got the same thing the unarmed strike and uh that's it okay can you check um D, D beyond and see if it's it has your weapons yeah D, &D beyond does because I'm, I'm looking at that and that's okay because david didn't have his all right so you are horbeck and i go into horbeck and I go into inventory, and I see all sorts of stuff. Yes, you definitely should have stuff. Let me bring up Horbeck here. Leia. Horbeck. Again, learning curve, guys. Inventory. I see a bunch of stuff in Hornbeck. I see a dagger, unarmed strike, longsword, crossbow, shield, chainmail, crossbow bolts, rations. I'm I'm not seeing that in that that like inventory pop up. What's the inventory pop up? Oh, and over on the left. Yeah, the the like the the shortcut thing that you were. Oh, oh weird. Um, did you did you equip stuff, Mark? It should be oh, like oh. highlighted in green in your character inventory sheet. I it's see. Okay. Equipped. Ah, uh, thank you. Gotcha. Okay, thank you, thank you. This learning curve, guys. We'll figure it out. I swear. I'll have to be honest with you guys. So far, this hasn't been horrible. I thought no, it would have all right. crashed a lot more than it did. All right. Um, so, David, are, you, are tell me when you're close, David. And I know it's like probably don't stress. Like, it's all good. Um, so let me give you guys some narrative. Sounds good. Well, okay, I will then. Ancient stone lines the walls and floors of this chamber. As you enter, drips of sand from the outside follow you in, settling into the cracks of the ancient tiled floor. Your form causes the light of the day behind you to cast long, shifting shadows over the space that has not seen daylight in nearly a millennium. A pair of carved onyx lions with fierce expressions sit guarding the heavy stone door. Their claws extend, extended and dug into the stone slabs on which they rest. Their manes are decorated with stripes of gold and platinum, mimicking the ancient headdress. On the floor between the statues, at the foot of the door, is an intricate mosaic of green, gold, and copper, which depicts a cobra posed to strike. In the four corners of this entryway, jackal-headed statues stand, guarding in si start, stand guard in silence, each holding a silver... Oh gosh, you guys. K-H-O-P-E-S-H. -E Kapash? Kopish? We're going to go with it. Kopish. These ancient stone uh, sentinels are nearly identical to each other and expertly created. Along the wall sit rows of old urns, many of them cracked and broken, but a few still surprisingly in good condition. I must, I must prepare to open the first door. Once this door is open, there's no turning back. Give me a few moments while I concentrate. So you guys are in this room, and and like I said, there's there's urns or some other things. You sort of see you see Obek, uh, I'm sorry, Abasi, sort of pull himself forward. Ah, wow, that's that. Their grid system's jacked. I I want symmetry, guys. I want symmetry, but he's not going to be symmetrical. Doesn't let me go halfway. Um. So you start seeing him just sort of mentally being prepared. I believe you're free to move around this room. If there's anything you want to do, see whatever else, now is the time. I think we can just turn. I don't think we can move yet. Oh, interesting. Um, what if I click that? How about now? Look at that. You guys are moving around. And look, it looks the direction you move. How nice is that?
So this is D&D, guys. So if there's anything that you want to look at, anything you want to open, smash. I'm I'm searching these uh, urns. Yeah, I'm definitely peeking in these urns. All right. So, you know, this that ancient pottery, it's sort of, you see it's etched with these hieroglyphics depicting figures which hold open jars. You know, some of them are, you know, um, some of these, these hieroglyphics emit smoke, some fire, others a liquid of some sort. Whatever paint was used to mark the contents of each urn has long faded, making it almost impossible to tell what might actually be contained within it. They seem to be, the ones that aren't broken, seem to be sort of, they, like, they have this sort of resin wax covering, right? Um, it looks like you could probably, with a little bit of effort, just sort of pop the tops. Wouldn't take you more than a minute. Um, alternately, you could Hulk smash this stuff. Hey, uh, Thomas, I, I've got my, uh, I just loaded up the basic inventory for uh, my paladin. And now all of my spells and everything seems to be in place, too. I don't know why that didn't. Uh, all right. Last time. Well, let me go. Give me one second, you guys. Because so think about your, um, your, um, your Bane, right? All right. D&D &D Beyond. Yes. And I need to start to import. Hold on, icons. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Import that. ActiveX. Oh, there's new settings. He just updated this today. All right. This should do it. Using and blah blah blah. Let's see what happens, man. Hang tight. Start import. Getting character data. I wonder if I can multitask while this is happening. And I just hope this doesn't mess anything up. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. All right. So um, I forgot. I have to learn names. Um, so. Da bull, you know, um, what you gonna do? You, you have a, you have an urn in front of you. It's sealed. What do you want to do? I think I'm gonna pull up my dagger and start to pry at the seal. All righty, I'm going to need you to do nothing because it doesn't require a check. I'm going to roll a table. Um, all right. Look at your character, my friend. Hey, uh, Thomas. Yeah. Do you want us to let you know of things that we notice, like, system-wise? Yeah, 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 this is, yeah, feel free to break character, like, that, okay, this so is session one, yeah. I think you're gonna, if, if we want to keep the names on hovering our characters, you, I think you may have to do it each time you load the new map, because I notice I could yeah. hover over you and see your name, but I can't see anyone else's name. Oh, for Which I'm sure later on isn't really going to be a worry since we'll get to know each other's characters, but right now it's okay. hard to keep track of. Let me remove all of you and then add you back. Um, and then, sorry, that means that you're going to have to um, you're going to have to re-add yourself. Uh, you're going to have to put yourself where you were because I won't remember where you all were. And let's see if this if this does it. So if I go trans. Nope, hold on one second. Prototype token. Give me one second. Um, hover by anyone. Do you guys, okay, do you want names always on or hover by any, whenever you hover? I would say hover. For me. Yeah, hover's fine. Okay. Update token. I think if it's on all the time, it's going to get cluttered. Okay, I just have to go into each of you and change this. Um, the setting. Hover by anyone. Resources. Hover by anyone. Update token. Because, yeah, I updated them on the screen. I need to update your character sheets. And, and Curtis, this is exactly the kind of, like, I know it sucks and it slows us down, but this is the kind of stuff that we need to do this first session or maybe the, probably the first two sessions until we get this figured out this is 
Yeah, this is all good. This is a great learning experience this way. Yeah. I keep forgetting that the whole point of this was to test out to see if we want to move to this for all the other games as well. Unless you guys decide that you like each other so much that um, you want to keep this game going. Let's see, I figured we'd finish this one anyway, but like this specific one. But have any of you noticed a different dynamic? I'm guessing that David and Melon and Curtis did. Or by anyone resources or by anyone update I already again. feel like I'm in, I'm enjoying being in character here it's a little bit different when you're not working with the people am I right I like not being chaotic <laughs> evil it's kind of nice glory wouldn't know what to do <laughs> with this that. this friendlier version of you okay I think I think I got everybody it's hold a, on it's a lot of work to keep up chaotic evil is, is, what is Karen? Is Karen chaotic evil? She's not, right? In the other game? Yeah, she's chaotic neutral, I think. Okay, now when I drag you guys onto anything, you should... It should yeah, there, now work. There's one character in our other game that I just keep pissing off on purpose because it's just funny. Well, but it, it did end up <laughs> with her... You lost a finger because of that. Yeah, her familiar bit your finger off, and... Uh, there you go. Okay, move back to where you guys were, and sorry about the the burp. Hey Thomas, please stop yeah. apologizing today. This is all learning for everybody. Yeah, you're doing an amazing job setting this up. We appreciate it. Ah, you're too kind. That's why you get all the promotions. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I see table ancient jar context that explains so much. Yeah, exactly. More about my own promotion path than anything, but all right, I'm doing my first. So, um, so Cliff, you rolled, correct? No, what do you want me to roll? What am I doing? No, no, I rolled for you. I rolled for myself. So, so did you see it in the, um, uh, yeah, you see it in the chat? Oh yeah. Nice. All right. So it looks like you found dust and wax. You found some dust and wax. Would you like it added to your inventory? Uh, negative. I did not think you would. So that's your first urn. There's about, there's one, two, three, four. There's like 10 urns if you want to try another urn. Anyone else? Who's next? Anyone? Uh, I'm, I'm right beside an urn. What would you like to do? Let's see if I can pry this open. I'm going to probably open the top of the urn. Oh. Score. Rotting, Rotting slime. slime. Now, here's what I don't know is That's how do I... <sighs> what is rotting slime? And is that a monster? <laughs> Let's see. Random encounters. It is not. It is just rotting slime. So you got lucky. Would you like me to I, add the, the rotting I slime to your inventory? No, I think this rotted lizard can just stay in this urn. Anyone else? Yes. Where are you at? You're over... Over to the west. Awesome. All right, so let me roll my dice thingy here. Boom. On. I'm learning. I'm learning all of these things. All right. So Horbeck, you know, as you, you know, as you pry open that, that specific urn, um, you are disappointed that you don't also get rotting slime. But what you do get is a swarm of scarabs. Some. Now, did that appear on the screen? Can you see it? Uh, no. I did not I think can. you could. Oh, yes, I can. The, it's right next to me. Yeah. All right, there you go. So now I add that to the encounter window. And I add all you all, except I'm not going to be adding... Um, Aussie. Aussie. Yeah, because he's concentrating. Who am I missing? Uh... 
Are you all in? The combat tracker? One, two, three, four, five. That's that's all of you, right? Yeah. All right. So, how combat works? Thank goodness we got to combat. Um. I find find my. Well, I got to bing my wife's phone. That's the thing I do in my family. Uh. So, do you see the dice? So, you go to the combat tracker, which is the two little swords. You see that, right? And yep. there's a little click that die. And we all will get to see your cool dice. Oh, that's pretty. Whose was that? I like it. Very nice. Ah, nice and simple. A little green. And we're just missing Dob Bowl. Oh, I thought my rolled. Look at that, Mr. F like, wow, that's a very, very, very popular color this evening is that pinkish color. Now you'll notice that you're in the, in the combat window, or if you want to look in the chat window, um, you'll see that um, the outline of your roll is also your dice color. There you go. Some, some cohesion. All right. So begin combat. Guess who goes first? Wait. Dob Bull, it okay, says you haven't okay. it says you haven't rolled yeah, your initiative yet. Yeah, hang on. I just yeah, I hit the wrong thing. Oh no worries. And good thing you rolled because you are now first. I'm hitting begin combat. And let's see what happens. Again, this is gonna be a learning curve, you guys. Ooh. Movement chain to combat turn. Okay, so that, yeah, so the combat should be locked. Um, you are now in combat. And I don't know why Leap Monkey has a big swirling thing below him. Oh, no, that's that's Bob Dole. Or Dob. Damn you and your names. Dob Bowl. You guys should have all been presidents. That would have been funny. All right, to, to move during combat, is it just use my arrow keys and move like normal or? Yeah, so your character, um, Mr. Mr. Bob Dob Bowl, let me bring up your character. So your movement is probably what, 30? When you're 25. A, 25 if you're a gnome. Yeah. Why I knew that? Oh, because we have a gnome in our other game. Um, so yeah, you can move five squares. And you can move through people, just so you know. Now, my question is, will it let you move? I'm just curious. Will it let you move any more? Oh, yeah. yeah OK, yeah, so it does not it does not lock you into. Um, um, look at that. He's are you using your arrow keys. Looks like you're using your arrow keys. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so that's your movement. Um, you are you do not have a line of sight to the scarabs. All right, yeah, I'll just, uh, I was thinking maybe I'll ready my short bow. Okay. Firing a bow, firing a bow at, uh, firing an arrow at Scarab seems dumb, so maybe I'll just hold. All right. Um, so what I don't know is how do you, I know how to advance combat, but do you advance combat? Like in Fantasy Grounds? Oh, oh, I see in the combat tracker I can enter, yep. All right, it is now the Beatles' turn, which sounded funny to me. I laughed. All right, so what the Beatles saw, let's see. The Beatles, of course, are going to attack Mr. Horbeck. And they're going to do that with. So I can I find another creature space, vice versa. Ah. I'm gonna try a simple attack first. Just, just learn how to use this tool. So, attack. So you notice? Do you guys see? Do you guys see the attack thing in the chat window? I see bites. Okay. Do you see the three buttons under yeah. it, or just me? That's just it? you. 
I'm going to it. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, How do... yeah. Oh, I need to. I need I to target someone. Yeah. So how do I target you? Um, target. And now I hit attack. Normal. And that's an eight. Darn the luck. So nothing's automated right now. So that's a miss, right? I'm assuming so. So what's your AC? 18. So that's a miss. Um, you see how automation could be nice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, because otherwise, you know... I... Uh, okay. Oh, cool. Okay. I see how that works. Okay, cool. So um, that ends its turn. This brings us to Average Jackal. I'm sorry, not Average Jackal. I keep looking, I keep reading the cursors, Atreus. not the names. So this is Atreus. <laughs> I was going to say, because my, my, neither my, my character's name nor my screen name is that. So. Um, let me do a quick think dot measure, right? Okay, yeah. I'm going to try to cast sleep on them. Because if you had done darkness, I would have punched you. I would have driven to your house and I would have punched you. <laughs> For those who don't know, when we've been testing this out, every time I would load the map, like Curtis had like cast like sleep all over the damn map. And I could not figure out it's a concentration spell in that last 10 minutes. And I could not for the life of me figure out how to get rid of it. <laughs> I still haven't found how I turn off con my own concentration spells in here. Well, I have a tool that will do it by time, but you know. All right, so go ahead and do your attack. You get to target. So I, I did. I just target it and I hit cast. You hit what? Oh, okay. So I have to then. Okay, hold on. I cannot. Oh, you can't zoom out now. I don't want to put anyone else to sleep. Uh, okay. Is there a keyboard way to zoom out of the map? I I don't know. I've there only. What what was it? Just to share the love. Uh, just your typical plus and minus. All right. Let's see if I could get it. Wow, this is very slow moving. Sorry, guys. Or everyone. I think they just got. Okay, right there. All right, so there are two. It says, I see two choices. It says, do you see these? It says damage and place measured template. Yeah, so uh, I think I, because it's not a damage spell. It's like click place measure template. Okay, and then what did you, where did you place it? Did you have to click the thing? Um, Sue, stop throwing mage hand. <laughs> um, what do you, what do you have to do? I, just, just click the swarm of beetles in. Is that how that works? No. I, so I already put the, the template. Oh, oh, that's weird. I thought I already put it. Oh no, you did. There's a giant. I just noticed that that round circle. Yeah. So it should. I did it a little bit in the corner so that I wouldn't put anyone else to sleep. But I, I don't know. So what happens Other with this that, now? So sleep it. Um, here, I'll read it to you. The spell sends creatures into a magical slumber. Roll 5d8. The total is how many hit points of of the creature the spell can affect. Creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose within range are affected in ascending order of their current point hit points. Starting with a creature that has the lowest current hit points, each creature affected by the spell falls unconscious until the spell ends. The sleeper takes damage or, so, or someone uses an action to shake or slap the sleeper awake. So basically, you roll a 5d8 um, and if their hit points are within the whatever the number is are lower then they fall asleep so do you roll that or do I roll that I would imagine you roll it because it's the creatures that have to do that which now have disappeared off the screen so I, I roll 5d8 right 
Yeah. Three, four, five, and I roll. And that is 18. So what does that mean? So if it's... Uh, wow, it is going really slow for me. So are there hit points? Their hit points are... are lower than 18? Uh, I'm looking... No, not even close. So then they are all asleep. As long as we don't touch them, they'll stay asleep until the spell ends, which is... So so their their hit points are greater than 18. Oh, it's greater than 18. Okay, then they it didn't work. It, they are still awake. And I have completely lost the map and everything now. Do you need to rejoin? Uh, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to have to. Because unlike um, Fantasy Grounds, I can't reshare. Like, there's no share the map with you. What's that? Who did? Who did? What? What is that? Sorry, sorry. That that was. It's okay. I can hit this little button right here. Boom! It's gone. Ooh, nice. Boom! Thank it's you. gone. Okay. So so basically, these guys are not asleep. No, and that, but not. The... If they had lower than eighteen, it, they would have fallen asleep then. That seems. Are you yeah. sure it's hit? It's hit point. Because I'll, I'll share something. Because they have 40 hit points. So there's no way they will ever go to sleep. So roll a 5d8. The total is how many hit points of the creature this spell can affect. Okay, so that's how many hit points of the creature. So, like, you were supposed to roll it. 5d8. So you well, roll 5d8. I can't do anything right now anyway, so... So I rolled the 5d8 for you, and it was... Oh, but I rolled 5d10. Oh. So... Uh, let me roll 5d8. Let me... Because we're learning... This is learning, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I roll that... That's a 17. So that means that... He can put to sleep 17 hit points worth of monsters so is that dam? is that damage oh no you know what? okay i think you're right i think what it does is it puts 17 monsters to sleep starting oh. with the one that has the you go with the lowest point hit points and then move up so if they're all the same hit points then, or if it is considered one creature it's one creature they go to sleep okay so okay. they would just be asleep okay so then i know how to do that Although the swarm of beetles has disappeared from my screen for some reason. Do you guys still see it? Nope. No. Unconscious. So the swarm of beetles is now unconscious. There. Uh, oh, there they are. They're just faded out because they're, oh, because they're unconscious, I guess. Okay. So, you know, you guys are, um, sort of maneuvering around this room and uh, and Atreus. Is it Atreus? Is that right? Not Atreus. It's Atreus. Yeah, Atreus. Like oh, Atreus. Atreyu, but Atreya. Atreya. Got it. Sue Atreya. Um, before you guys can even get to the Beatles, he's like, Kazooie, Kablau. And these things just like all of these scarabs just sort of stop. And if a beetle could snore, you would hear them snoring. But alas, they do not snore. So unless you guys attack them, which is up to you, um, they're asleep. And does sleep work? Does it run through walls? It's a ninety foot radius. So yeah, but does it does it go wow. through walls? It doesn't say if it does or doesn't. Well, I would say I would say it probably doesn't go through walls. That's just my opinion. I don't know. If it's, if it's magic, it's not Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Although sometimes, but Wi-Fi is kind of magic. Um, all right, so those scarabs are asleep, and there's more urns to open if you guys want to open more urns. We want to we risk want... this. <laughs> what if we really need dust and wax later? <laughs> we should stock up now. And gooey yeah. slime. 
I don't know. I'm trying to figure out if it's going to take us an hour to get through all the urns. It is one. Each of you can take an. He's like, you guys can do five per round, basically. If someone wants to, like, look. If someone wants to do an urn, let me know. Otherwise, um, otherwise, it looks like Abasi's about ready to do his thing. Wait, I want to. I want to see what's up to these sphinxes. I want to look the. I want to look for a spark of life in the divine in its eyes and oh, see okay. what's up with it. Melan, I have no idea oh. what you just said. Something about a spark of wine? No. Uh, I want to say hi to the Sphinx. I want to see oh. what's up. I want to look for the spark of life in the divine in its eyes. Okay, gotcha. Um, uh, yeah, so you make eye contact with the Sphinx. Um, and uh, they they don't, you know, you, you stare into their soul. They don't have a soul. They don't stare back. Um, but they, they seem pretty intense. And, you know, part of you wonders if these things are going to come to life. Like, why, what, like, what is their purpose? What is their mission? Can I, can I uh, investigate? Can I, can I, can I... Uh, Roll an investigation. investigation. You guys are out of combat unless you decide to attack the scarabs. So, um, I will re-enable free movement. Um, Curtis, is, uh, is sleep friendly fire? If someone wandered uh, into that zone? So, so they would have had to have been in it when I cast it. Not, I don't think it's, uh, they can't, they don't just walk into it and it falls asleep. It's, it's out when they cast so Sue, you know you 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 know you check out these uh, these statues, um, and uh, they seem they seem like they're just sort of an homage to the gods and sort of um, sort of a, a visual warning, like do not proceed. And then it sort of rings in your head. You remember um, that Abasi initially like this wasn't originally a prison, right? This was this was a tomb of treasures and 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 goodness. So um, well. You know their new their new purpose is sort of uh, to to warn those who might enter. The original purpose was that of grandeur, right? Um, so yeah, you don't you don't get the feeling that these actually will come to life, but you'd have to roll an arcana if you really wanted to know that. And I will make you sing a song if you do your bard stuff or play your instrument. Uh, really quick, another thing, Thomas. So I noticed my spell slots are all pick it up i i think it was from last night when i was playing around and testing so oh, just as yeah. a note i think we all because we did a long rest before we came in here i think if you guys have played around with it you need to make sure you hit long rest so i'm just letting you know i'm going to hit long rest right now and then i will yeah do my spell i was curious what can you take a long rest yourself does it let you and then i'll do that oh no okay so no, never mind. It was just horrible UI. It, it, oh. the uh, the dots are filled in when the spell is available and it goes away. The opposite of what my mind thought. Sorry, never mind. Oh, so it's a burn down, not a fill in. Yeah. Okay, we're getting there, you guys. Like this is, I think we've learned a lot already. All right. Um. So, Sue, so, you know. Well, you might be fascinated. There's really, there's really not much else unless you want to roll an arcana. Let's see if there's any magics. I'd love to roll an arcana check. Uh, you do, you do that then. You roll, Sue. You roll. Are you a girl named Sue yeah. or a boy named Sue? Are you a boy named Sue? Tell me, you're a boy named Sue for Johnny Cash. Yeah, you I like a lot about magic. Yeah, you're like, man, this is cool. I don't know if there's any magics coming from here. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's 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 no. Right. So Abasi, I... you know, Abasi started to look pretty intense, you guys. So um, really quick. Yeah. Before Abasi is done, since I'm kind of standing behind him, I'm gonna look at him and point at him, and use my cantrip to strike. I'm just uh, kind of curious what his defenses are. Like, how well is he gonna be able to help us out? So crew strike allows grants me a brief uh, insight into the target's defense. So whoever I point at, all so right. So def- armor class, strength, all of them. Okay, yeah. Uh, so so yeah, you see, um, 
you know, Abassi is pretty, it's pretty badass, right? Um, his, his armor class is roughly a 17. Um, he's got a plus three um, on his initiative rolls, which is pretty awesome. He's got an 18 wisdom. So this dude is, 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 is wise, um, wise for his years, right? Um, you know, his charisma is only 11, right? Which it sort of explains sort of his awkwardness around the fire. Um, <clears throat> but his, you know, his dexterity, his constitution, right? His strength, um, all above board, 14s and 16s across the board. Um, you know that he has multi-attack, right? Um, he has, a, you know, he has um, a quarter staff of a 10, right? Um, you know, you've seen that, right? It has the, 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 the gem glowed as he opened the door. Um, what other stuff can I tell you? I'm, this is, uh, this is sort of new to me. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, okay. It's just kind of his defenses and stuff. So you don't need to go into spells or anything like that. Just higher level information. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, he is, you know, he is lawful good. Right. Um, and, uh, um, he does seem, you know, he does seem like he's seen some shit as they say. He also seems like he's ready to roll. Right. So, you know, Abasi, he stands before this doorway and his onyx defenders, you know, clutching his holy symbol. He's backlit by the sun, you know, through the opening outer door. He evokes this sun god with a mixture of religious scripture and arcane command words. He has scarcely finished the last word when the doors shudder and slide away. As the doors part, there's this, and you should have heard something. Um, as the doors part, there's a small change in air pressure, and the stench of decay and death rushes out to greet you from within the dark halls beyond. Abasi's expression, I think I have to click that to unlock it, right? Did that door unlock? Oh, I right click it to unlock it. No, it did. Okay. Um, Abasi's expression immediately turns to one of great concern. The old warrior says, I, I, I did not expect signs of life or that stench. The hallway ahead is about 10 feet wide, lined with ancient sandstone, and begins and seems to be crawling with thousands of black scorpions. They have little gleaming red eyes and recoil from the morning light streaming in from the entrance behind you. Abasi slams the tip of his staff you know, upon the stone and invokes the power of a ten, causing a blast of light to erupt from the already glowing head of his staff, which instantly evaporates the scorpions around him and causes the rest to retreat into the darkness of the hall ahead. And that, my friends, is a very bad sign. Now you can see through the door now, right? Yes. Okay, I'm just trying to understand how things work. So, the door is open, right? Um, as the backyardigan said, you know, into the thick of it. Do you guys want to go forward a bit, or do you want to call it for the night? I defer to the wisdom of the crowd. I'm getting for another. This is a this this might be. A... Okay, I heard Cliff. What'd you say, Cliff? You're game to what for another round? I was gonna say I'm game for like one more room. All right. What about you, Mr. David? Who's sitting in a hotel room, probably bored. Um. No, not bored. No. Um. Yeah, I'm game as well. I I've got my basic weapons and stuff, but I I need to top up my inventory for our next game. Okay, you can do that in D and D Beyond. Yes, definitely. No one, um, yeah, yeah I can no, do that later. No one mess with D and D Beyond until give me like an hour after our game because I have to export your characters, so it'll sync what you did in here back to the game or back to D and D Beyond. Um, everyone else, thumbs up. Mesh rooms. You're in New York City. Are you okay with like another twenty minutes? Awesome. We're All in right. New York. Where are you at, New Where? York, Mela? Oh, Manhattan. Whereabouts? Uh, like the, uh, east, uh, the east of. The, I'm in a my part. My my room is mostly bed, uh, so very small. That's why I'm here. 
Yeah, Milan, we have to check out your microphone situation next time we play, because it is un un busted. Unknowably bad. Um so Mr. Yeah, Mr. Muda used to live in New York for many years. Your your most I still tell the story of, of your answering machine that stopped working because cockroaches had eaten all of the rubber from the wires. Yes. I mean <laughs> Cockroaches <laughs> ate my answering machine. <laughs> Yeah, and ironically, I saw a TikTok where someone pulled apart a phone and it, they had done the same thing. It was like full of cockroaches and they ate the rubber off. Um, I think you also told me that in New York, you if you lived there for more than, what, three years, you probably will have been mugged at least once. Yeah. Or so, something like that. Or maybe that was a Saturday Night Live skit. I don't know. All right, cool. So, um, all right, so... You know, the light of this you know entrance quickly fades as you sort of proceed further into the fault. You sort of see um, there's like red stonework here. It's made of crimson orange color and countless sputtering of red torches affixed to the walls, barely illuminating the hallways. Close inspection of the torches would reveal that they're sort of magical flames, one that have likely been burning for centuries without dying. They give off no heat or no smoke, giving the main hallway sort of an unexpected chill. The doorways lining the, There's doorways lining the hall here, though the lack of any signage or symbols makes it impossible to know what awaits you. And that's sort of what you can see. Um... Feel free, you know, Abasi is going to move forward sort of into the thick of it. Let you all move your characters yourself. And I really do like the keyboard stuff, man. That is, it is fun to drive them like a little remote control car. And don't forget, if you hold shift down, it changes the direction uh, because opportunity attacks will be based on the direction you're aimed. We've got uh, two people that's, like still in the rear. Wait a minute. Is it leaving ghosts of you guys behind? I've got a ghost of me behind, which is weird. Yeah, I did that for me, too. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Did. yeah. a ghost. Do I have are to observe it? Probably because we're still in combat. Yeah, I was going to say, are we still in combat? Boom. That is it, you guys. Now, I'm going to assign your XP. Look at that, you guys got XP. Look I kind that. of like, I like how that works, right? So it's not like this weird, like, wait 10 weeks to get XP. Every time you do a battle, you get your XP. Um, we got Mr. Bane. Mr. Bane is still sort of like on top of a statue, riding it like a horse. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can't lose my guy. I can. How about try that now? Now, can you move your guy? There you go. There we go. Thank you. So, Miss, you know, Cad Cad gets a little sleepy as he enters uh, this the sleep zone, but uh, I'm just kidding. It doesn't actually impact you. So you'll notice there is um, a stairway sort of leading down a long hallway. To the right of Horbeck is a door, and to the left of Abasi is a door. I ask Abasi if he knows, uh, like, directionally, which way should we go? You seem to have the most knowledge. What, what is the... You know, I... None of none of the plans, none of the plans that I found give details of, of, of what is where. What I know is there should be a central room of some sort that contains the queen, but there's also, there's also four generals. My assumption, and from what I read, they're probably flanking the queen in some way, uh, but I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I, you know, so I like from memory, I, I and you know, I don't have a, I don't have a map, um, of the area. So it, you know, it's basically, you can go left, you can go right, you know. But he does he does sort of look at, um, you know, he, he looks at Horbeck, who's who's to his right, and says. We, we probably should sort of get a sense of what's around us and, and proceed with caution. Yeah, prudent advice. So probably, probably in your best interest at this point to maybe do a perception check, check, check for traps, whatever you, whatever, whatever, however you roll. Let's see what I perceive. All right, so roll a, please roll a perception check, my friend. Should we all take a moment to perceive? 
Let me, uh, yeah, don't roll anyone yet. Let me, let me try oh. and do a see if I can do a, um, I'll let you reroll it. This isn't a learning curve. I want to see if I can um, ask for a roll. So, okay, hold on. So a quick question for me. When I, when I hover on checks, I only have a strength check, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. I don't have arcana. I don't have perception. Um, let me look at your character sheet in one second, but let me quickly do a request for perception right now. I think and, perception and, is under skills. Yeah, it's under skills. So now you see in the chat, there's this little dice. I think you click the dice in the chat window. Lot, huh? So we got Horbeck is your winner, barely. Um, so so you guys sort of you know you put your ear to the ground, you do the whole like gather some of the dust off the floor and sniff it and taste it and flick it. Um, and you know Horbeck, you know Horbeck, you don't hear anything. Um, it's still hey guys, I don't hear anything. Exactly, like there's. There's really nothing. I mean, 13 is not horrible, but um, yeah, there's it, it, it sounds like it, it sounds like it might be safe to open either the door to the east or the door to the west. And which door you open is sort of your call. So oh, I open. Do we check for trap yeah, sure. door? Or... Yeah, do we have any any uh, any people who are really good at finding traps i think i should be good at that let me look yeah all right you want to roll it and i'm assuming you're tr think... which door are you doing the left or the, or the east or the west oh yeah which one do we want to go through oh, east okay east is east a -cha -cha -cha. west is west Deeper totally into the gap. What's that? Sorry, I was singing Thompson Twins. Kind of lets you walk through doors. Oh, it does let you walk through doors. Uh, yeah. Well, it's because of the grid system. Like the door is kind of like halfway. So. Ah. Uh, yeah, I really feel like the grid should have been the smaller blocks, not the bigger blocks. But then the scale would be off, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's all good. All right, so you're gonna do the east, the east door, right? Um, did you roll your? Did you roll your? Yeah, what am I? What do I roll for? Checking for traps, actually. Uh, let me look. Should be under skills, right? I think it's typically just a straight investigation check. Is it? Yeah. Slide of hand I'm... would be lock picking, I think. Oh, that's right. That's right. You're not trying to unlock a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. It is investigation. My bad. You would think okay. I would know this after two years. It doesn't seem like we've been playing for that long, you guys. But like this collective group has been playing for two years. I'm not. I've got nothing special for investigation. I'm like just plus two if anybody's better. Well, you're the you're by the door. Just roll it. All right. I do have a plus six. Oh yeah. I don't wanna, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up here. We can we can just um, okay then go ahead and three us and move forward. That'll be your new stack rank. All right, you go ahead and roll your uh, investigation check. Okay, so let's see. Do I just click that? It should be yeah. Pretty dice ten. Good enough. Yeah. Um. This this door just seems like a door. It's a door. Oh, do we do we want to open it or? Let's go for it. I I slowly push the door open. It flies open. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so this cramped room sort of holds a trio of sarcophagi. Two of them rest against the walls on either side of the door. Um, and the last stands against the far wall facing the door. The corners beside the standing sarcophagi two jackal-headed statues holding silver 
Kapash. Kap Kapesh? I'm going to learn how to pronounce that before we play again. They sort of stand guard over the dead. Um, each sarcophagi bears a highly detailed cover carved to represent the person um, interred within and are otherwise decorated modestly. Mostly polished stone with small inlays of gold. Scattered around the room are old broken urns and a few that are not yet destroyed. Um... Set against the wall is a withered corpse clad in ancient, destroyed robes and armor. Resting in its lap are old, bloodstained parchments written in various language and dialects that don't immediately make sense. Now, there you go. They don't make sense because we don't understand the language of them, or they don't make sense because we do understand the language and they're nonsense? Well, you're you're not in the room yet. It's too it's too soon to tell. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're free to move in, move about the cabin. Whoever wants to move in. All right, I'm gonna poke my head in. Makes sense. So what you, yeah, so what you see is like each corpse is sort of clad in ancient robes and armor and sort of been rotted away by what could be like centuries of time passing. Um, the corpses themselves are withered and they bear sort of fatal wounds that indicate they died quite violently. Um, you know, both of the men, both of these corpses uh, appear to be holding old, rusted, worthless iron pry bars, indicating that perhaps they intended to be, you know, to open the sarcophagi in the rooms, but died before they had a chance. Guess what? We're not going to be opening. So what to say? <laughs> like a clue. So a couple of things that we don't do often in our other games that I just wanted to throw out there, just as a learning moment. We never do medicine checks. So a medicine checks might tell you how they died. Um, of course, we always can do the old old fashioned investigation if you guys want. Who are the smart people here? I also a six. Mm, sounds like you should head enter the room. Dumbest now. of the dumb here. I, I have a seven in wisdom and nine in Wild. intelligence. Who, who just rolled that? Sue, Sue rolled. Uh, Sue rolled us an eight. That's so smart today. I take so, out my water skin and I pour <laughs> one out for these poor dead folks. Um, yeah. I say I think they're dead. Yeah. So, yeah Sue. Sue's like, step aside, step aside. I are smart. And uh, then proceeds to learn absolutely nothing. You guys. I mean, and, and just heads up, like, you missed an investigation check by half. <laughs> Anyone else want to give it a shot? Sure. Uh... All right, I'm looking for a DC-16. I'm looking for a DC-16 intelligence investigation check. And, oh, so close. Um, what you can tell with that 13 is if you look at the robes of these corpses, you see sort of several small brass, bronze, and gold accessories. And interesting, they look a bit like Abbasi's own. You aren't sure because of that role, but you get the feeling that they might be part of the Order of Aten. Um, and, uh, you know, your spidey sense says maybe ask Abasi to come in. Abasi, come here. And he heads. Oops, yeah, he heads in. And he what sort does of flips. Look like to you. Heavens above. These. These men are from the Order of Aton. See, see, see the badges. See these brooches. These belong to my to my order. These these are good, honorable men. I hope they died with honor. I use honor why, too many times in that sentence. Why do you think sentence. they were? Why do you <laughs> think they were trying to pry open the sarcophagi? I can only imagine that that there was something of use, something beneficial. Uh, they would never 
they would never disturb the dead without reason. And he just, he is sort of, you, you see sort of his eyes are sort of like wondrous, seeing, you know, even dead, seeing some of his fallen brethren sort of, you know, reaffirm his, his commitment to the brothers. What's a Basi's thoughts on us opening the sarcophagi? The, do you think they're, whatever they were getting is of such value that it may aid us on our quest? Is that why they may have been doing it? Well, you know, the the sarcophagi, um, look, oftentimes people were buried with treasure. Uh, they were buried with, with maps. They were buried with family heirlooms. Or, you know, sometimes it's a trap. Um, one one can't say. I, I will say that I'm I'm feeling a sense of calm. Thank you, Bard. Thank you, Bard, for, for playing that song. It brings me back. Now, of course, the Bard, I mean, the Abbasi would have no idea what Amazing Grace specifically was. But um, it does feel like some sort of an old, tiny religious song that sort of speaks to him. So Bassey's going to, you know, you know, he's he's sort of spoken his piece. Um, he's happy to help you guys out, but he's going to he's going to step out and make room for the muscles if anyone's going to mess with these things. I just have this feeling that that. Uh opening these things up will trigger some kind of trap. Why don't you roll a perception check, Mr. Mr. L gotta learn your name, Mr. Horbeck? Horbeck. Roll a perception check. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I got nothing yeah, for I'm, you. I'm underground. I'm in a cave. Yeah, you, you uh, you don't know, you don't know too much. You don't Do we know too have much any, that. any trap finders among us? That I don't know. You'd have to ask the rest of your peoples. I guess. How, how would you know if you're a trap finder? Mm -hmm. Any anybody who's uh, well versed in. Cool. I think I'm I'm good at disarming traps, but not necessarily finding them. I think detecting them. Yeah. So Atreus, you know, Abbasi's like, you know, perhaps, you know, perhaps while they investigate that room, perhaps we should look at the West Room. I should have went in character. I'm my bad. I could say that again. Perhaps, perhaps while they're investigating this 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 Eastern Room, it would it would be in our best interest to divide and conquer and, and potentially look at this West Room. What do you think? Sure. I'll go in. Question mark. So you guys had already rolled. You've already rolled investigation. You didn't see any, you know, that trap. That was good for the area. Uh, there was nothing. Did I already open the door up? Uh, yes, yeah, I, I did. Oh, oh, so you can open doors. Yeah. Lesson learned. Um, again, so this room, you know, this room is very, very similar to the last room. Right. Um, one could say almost identical. Um, you know, next to the wall is a withered corpse clad in ancient destroyed robes and armor splayed out on the floor in the dried pool of blood. A rusted pry bar also lays in the hands, uh, you know, it lays on, the, I'm sorry, it lays on the stone nearby. Um, and just sort of passively, you hear something. You're not quite sure what it is. I hear, I hear water. Does anyone else hear water? Does it sound similar to the the um, uh, one of the beetles scarabs that we? Well, roll a perception check. Good enough. Even better. So Trey's got the wisdom. Yeah. So check it out. So you know. 
as you really investigate, I'm going to move Bane out of the way a little bit. Um, you know, Bane got really close to that, you know, to that sarcophagi and um, realized Bane that it's like, kissing it. Yeah, realized it was actually a false wall. Um, and, you know, just sort of <clears throat> grabs onto it and sort of slides it to the side. And it reveals this tube of rushing water. Right, sort of um, heading o- heading away, heading away, like up and away, um, as if it's like a water slide heading down. Now, just your gut says this might be a one way trip, unless you have some rope or otherwise. Um, I got I got some rope. This definitely seems like the part of the movie where everybody goes down the water slide, right? Could be. <laughs> I go to the other room and go to the, the exact same uh, statue and see if I hear water, hear the same, same noise. noise. Yeah, Roll a perception check. No. No, it's silence. You hear your heart breathing. You hear the sort of the heavy breathing of your compatriots, um, but um, no, no water here. It seems like it's that specific to that room. Okay, I go back and tell everybody that. Hey, it doesn't seem like there's a, another, a similar thing on the other side. All right, so we want to go down this slide and see if there's a pirate ship with a one-eyed pirate down there. <laughs> one-eyed Willie. Um, so Abasi is super intrigued. Um, you, you know, he's like, he's like, I read, I read nothing of this, of the secret passage in any of the literature that I found. This is, you, you just, you just bear with me. You know, I, I, I'm on an adventure like the rest of you. This is, I'm fascinated by this, by the slide. But also, Somebody has a rope, right? But also curious, curious about what was north down the stairs. I'm, I'm of two minds. You know, take the sure path or take the unknown. And with that, yeah, you guys... Someone has a rope. Yeah, who has and, a rope? And so I, th- so I, th- I think, uh, think uh, Dob Bowl has a rope. Um, but right too. now, I'm going to tell you something that, that, um, that may not surprise you. Until the next time on the Motley Few Adventure. I believe, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good place for us to stop. Yeah, nice. it is. It is solid. Um, would love, would love a quick debrief um, for anyone who has comments so far. What are you thinking about the clients? Like, you know, we've done Fantasy Grounds, we've done this. What are you guys thinking so far? Way better. I think with the. I think with a few more a few more turns on this one, uh, th- this one can become quite interesting. Yeah, so this is this will be especially I like the audio, especially especially interesting to uh, to Cliff and and uh, and 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 Mark because you're on the cusp of winding up your your Lost Minds adventure, right? Like you, you know you've got the Lost Minds to go through, and then we have to sort of figure out what's next. And if it's not fantasy grounds, then perhaps it's like we transition into Foundry. So yeah, so far I, I'm liking this. I wish I do think I wish there was a little bit more automation, like adding. Hopefully, you guys noticed, but when when you awarded us our twenty points, I had to then click add to add it to my my sheet. So like little things like that, I think. Oh, oh yeah. Better. You... Um, so for those who didn't do that, uh, make sure like those are the kinds of things. Make sure you tell everybody before we be, before we proceed. If you scroll back up and you didn't add yours, make sure you do that, you guys, because you want that experience point. You want those experience points. Um, unless you guys decide that you don't want to use experience points at all. Right. You can also use milestones. Right. Like you finish the adventure and you level up as opposed to I kind of like experience because, you know, there's some risk involved with it. Um, yeah, I'm. 
I'm of two minds. Like there are some things that I love about Fantasy Grounds, but I think that's because I'm used to Fantasy Grounds. And yeah. it was it was not like yeah, I, it was not easy, you guys, to come to like to love to like use fan like it is unbelievably complicated. So why don't we for the next it's too soon to say? Right oh yeah, now for me. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm used to fantasy grounds, but there was there was a lot of headache and heartache with it. This I love the interface. I love the color. It's much more vivid. I love the fact that I don't need soundscape. Um, <laughs> I just got to learn where all of the things are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Thomas, do you have? Is there like an asset pack for tokens? I kind of tried poking around, but I couldn't actually browse to any. So yeah, um, um, go look at um, Forgotten Adventures. So just go to their web, like look, Google Forgotten Adventures. Um, we ha we own all of those assets. You're welcome. Um, that's all the top down stuff. Or if you find a set that you really really love and you want your character, let me know and we'll add it. I'll add it to our, collection. To our collection. Is there a way that I can set those on my own, or do do I just need to find one and then tell you? Uh, find one and tell me. I don't know if there's like if you click on your character sheet. If you click on your uh, on your character sheet, right up at the top on your title bar, it should say like. Um, token yeah i can actually get, i found the screen where you can change the token asset and it's got like a file browser there but i can't and all i browsed all around uh and i couldn't actually find any like actual assets to select. do you have so, yeah. do you have the button where it says image path do you have the button that says um uh select variant yeah one second so select variant basically is a weird user experience. Um, it's going to bring up a bunch of random shit that doesn't look right. Click that word where, like, I'm looking at Sue's right now. Um, but type in whatever word you want, and it'll try to find any assets that are sort of related to that. It's a more visual version of it, that, that and that should map to all of our stuff. I upload. We have we have something like eight thousand tokens. Yeah, I kind of figured. Um, yeah, you know me. I'm like a collector. Area, collector. I didn't see that. <laughs> um, what, what do you not see? Uh, how did you get to the select variant thing? Oh, um, I clicked um, appearance. So um, if you click token and then appearance, and then where it says image path, there's a button that looks like uh, a little... Do you have two buttons to the right of the image path? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think I'm there. So you I click see, that, like, you click that. User data, core data, the bazaar, and asset, my assets. Okay, hold on. That's so. That's the um. That's the browse files. Do you have two buttons next to that 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 um, image path or just image one? Path or just one. Oh, just one. Okay. Uh, let me look because I um. So if you click the if you click the image path one. Um. Oh Christ! I don't even know what you're seeing. Um, why don't we? Well, we can take this offline. I can see if there's a way for you to browse. There's probably a permission that I have to set that lets you choose your own token. I think most DMs have all of their stuff sort of locked down. Um, uh, so what I'm thinking for next time, what do you get? I think I'm gonna crank. So we went. This was like do it yourself. I'm gonna crank the meter, like the lever, a little bit more to automation. And to see how that feels for our next um, our, our next rally, what I was thinking if this works for all of you was we would play every other Monday, same time, same bet channel, same yep. bet. Does this work for everybody? Uh oh, I'm that seeing trepidation. Me, yeah, I'm seeing trepidation I, in I, May Shoes. I I would prefer if we could do another day, or I can't believe I'm saying this later. That would be helpful for me. I usually. I have like a meeting from seven to eight, and then usually like a team debrief that goes pretty long afterwards on Mondays. But like literally any other day, we're just later than the day. Ah, uh, yeah. Doing it on Tuesday instead of Monday would actually be a lot better for me too. Okay, I can look into that. Um, what about anyone else? It's, it's easier than than text messages because it's it's not, we don't we aren't getting like the feedback cycle going as fast. Does Tuesday work for most people? think so that that'll Should work for me too if we if we do it every other week that's great then i can set up kind of like the sleep schedule 
for our little guy. All right, so we'll do it every other week. I want to alternate because I play with you other ragtag group on other the other Mondays, right? Um, so my, my whole thing was I was just going to alternate like every Monday would be D&D, but I could do every other Tuesday for this one for now. I just thought some sort of recurrence would be beneficial. Um, we, you guys actually made a bunch mm-hmm. of progress tonight, a, a surprising amount, honestly. Um, oh, there's my one-on-one that's waiting for me to join him. I just realized what time it is. Um, I, I have a meeting after this, guys. Good times. Um, Enjoy. Yeah. Um, cool. So I guess until the next time, thank you, guys. And if there's any feedback, like let's let's collect it. If there's anything that could be better or you would like automated or it was confusing... So far, it feels pretty okay. Uh, Curtis, you crashed like three times tonight, though. I think it's going to be fun. You know, I'm a little worried about your crashing. Yeah, I just have to uh, explain to my wife that I need a better computer to play Dungeons & Dragons. It it is what... Wait until you get your new work computer. Let me tell you, (laughs) any conversation that starts with, Honey, for Dungeons & Dragons, I need... Anything that you say after that just strengthens the marriage, let me tell you. It just strengthens the marriage. Yeah. They're like, oh my God, for that Dungeons and Dragons hobby? Because I feel so awesome about that. It will, yes, absolutely. No problem. So, yeah, so if you guys don't see me in two weeks, you'll know what happened then. You know, know, Curtis, just just so you know, I I, I did, I was able to load this on the stream deck, just so you know. Hmm. So, it, that thing, by the way, if you guys, anyone wants a handheld gaming computer, holy crap, the Steam Deck is made. Just, just go buy one. If you have disposable income. All right. On that note, we've been two hours and 60 minutes. Thank you guys. I, I know it's a huge sacrifice. Hopefully you guys still also had fun while crashing all this crap. Um, and uh, a whole this new group great. of people. Um, it was awesome to hear you guys all sort of engage. And a shout out to David for his role playing. And Melon, you were probably yeah, role playing nice too, but you always sound like you always sound like Melon to me. So, you know, I always a, I can do a voice, I can do an accent. Awesome. Just make sure it's not racist. That's all we ask. All right, I'll see you guys. Cheers. See you guys. Nice meeting everyone. Thanks for the game, everyone. See you guys. Great meeting you. You too. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.